Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you kind of want to list off how many there, how many dots there are in each step. So like we talk about these being steps, it's just like each instance. Okay, so on here, how many are in the first one? Four. Four. And how many are in the second one? Next one. Four. Next one. Okay, and twenty. Right. So what are we going up by each time? Four. Going up by four. So where it says describe the pattern recursively, what we're gonna say is. The initial value is four, and each time we add four to the previous term. With recursive, you always want to use the previous term and then add the common difference to it. So you always want to state the initial value and then say each time we add whatever the common difference is to the previous term. That's how you describe the recursive formula. Questions over that? Okay. Now part A asks for you to write it explicitly. So part A asks you to write it explicitly. I told you that the formulas are over there. So let's kind of talk through what do these things mean. So this a sub one is your first term. So what's our first term in the sequence? And how much are we going up by each time? Four. Okay, and then we're just gonna rewrite n minus one. This a sub n is just saying the nth term. So like, let's say we wanna find the fifth term. We would say a sub five is equal to five, I'm sorry, four plus four times five minus one, <laughs> right? Now I talked about this the other day. This could be the answer, or you could go ahead and distribute this guy, and this would give me 4 plus 4n minus 4, which if we simplify that, that's just going to be 4n. So sometimes your answer choice might look like this, and sometimes your answer choice might look like this. On your mastery check, the first question literally asks, what's the common difference? The next question asks, write the explicit formula. Cool. Okay. Okay, so how many dots are in the tenth step? How many dots are in the hundred step? Say it again. Forty and four hundred. And the way we do that is we just take our formula that we just plugged into, or I'm just wrote out, and we plug in ten into this equation and then we type it into our calculator. I highly suggest that you go grab one of those yellow calculators because you can use that on the test. You can't use Desmos on, I'm sorry, you can't use Desmos on the mastery checks. So I would make sure that you grab a calculator and maybe try a couple of times, make sure that you don't have any like errors typing it in, okay? Now for the hundredth step, I would plug in 100. And again, make sure that you type it in correctly, okay? I would always do it twice and make sure that you get the same answer. Recursive formula, okay, is going to be a sub one is equal to a sub n equals a sub n minus one plus d. So what's our first term? So we're gonna say a sub one equals four. And then all we're gonna do on that next one is say a sub n is equal to a sub n minus one. And what was our common difference? So the only thing with the recursive formula that you replace is your first term and the common difference. Okay, on your test, they're going to ask this question. They're gonna say, are, is the explicit and the recursive formula describing the same pattern? Yes, they are. Okay, and here's the reason why. If I wanted to find the fifth term, I could use the recursive or the explicit. The recursive is going to take me longer. Explicit's gonna get me to the answer faster, but they're still gonna be the same thing. Okay, so they get the same answer. The recursive uses previous term. Explicit finds exact. Yeah. 
He decided to place the first row in 14 bricks. Okay, so we got first row has 14 bricks. And we say second row. I'm sorry, in the second row. This is number two. Sorry. Pen in the first one. I can't read. We're doing so well. So first one, we have 10. Second one, we have 14. Sorry, my eyes skipped that part. All right. The third row, we got 18, right? It says write an explicit formula and the recursive formula. So let's go ahead and write the explicit. So explicit, we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. What was our first term? We got 10. And then what was our common difference each time? Like, what are we going up by? 4. So here is our formula, right? Again, you can multiply that out if it's a multiple choice question, or you can just leave it like this. That's okay. Now, for recursive, we have this formula of tell me what a sub 1 is, and then tell me what our common difference is, right? So what's a sub 1? And what our common difference? 4. With recursive, you have to have these two pieces. Okay. Now, if we want to figure out how many are in the 20th row, would you use recursive or explicit? I would use explicit. Recursive is going to take a little time. So if we want to figure out what, how many are in the 20th row, then we're going to say 10 plus 4 times 20 minus 1. Can you type that into your calculator and tell me what you get? Say again, 86. Everybody agree? All right, we're going with it. Number three, we get this equation and it says write the next four terms, right? So if we plug one into this equation, what are we gonna get? If we plug one into this equation, what are we gonna get? So 12 minus five times one, what does that give me? What is it? Seven. If I plug two into that equation, what am I going to get? So that's going to be two. Okay. If I plug three into this equation, what am I going to get? Negative three. If I plug four into this equation, what am I going to get? negative eight. Okay, so going back to this problem really quick, let's say I wanted to find when a sub n equals negative 23. Okay, so let's say I want to find when a sub n equals negative 23. How am I going to go about solving that? So I have the answer, but I don't have the n number. So how am I going to go about solving that one? So I have to solve for n. So I'm going to take negative 23 and set it equal to my equation. Now can I solve this? Yeah. What would I move first? The 12. So I'm going to subtract 12. And that gives me negative 35. And then what am I going to do? Divide by negative 5, right? So n is going to equal 7. So at n equals 7, the equation equals negative 23. Does that make sense? So remember how we did this? If we kept going, 7 would equal negative 23. So we see how I did that. The last question on your mastery check works like this. It's like you have to work it backwards. Okay. Okay, so again, can you write the explicit formula? Can you find the common difference? Can you write the next four terms? Okay. And then can you solve something like this? This one might give you a little bit of trouble, but I think you can manage it. Okay. 
you're going to have to read on that last problem. Okay. Which one doesn't belong on that one? D, Y. All of them are going. Linear or like a diagonal, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Again, remember, which one doesn't belong? There's not a wrong answer. You just got to give a reason why. Okay. So we're going to talk about solving and graphing a system of linear inequalities in context. Okay. I know we all hate reading, but we got to read. Okay. So let's go yellow and let's go. Okay. okay. Alina, or Elena, is considering buying bracelets and necklaces as gifts for her friends. Bracelets cost $3 and necklaces cost $5. She can spend no more than $30 on the gifts and Elena needs at least seven gift items. Okay, so we're gonna write a system of inequalities that represents the number of necklaces and bracelets. Okay, so B is going to be the number of bracelets and N is going to be the number of necklaces. Okay, so let's write it. So we got B is bracelets, and we got N is necklaces. So how much do each one cost? How much are the bracelets? Okay, so three times however many bracelets we're gonna buy, right? And then we've got how much are necklaces? Okay, so we got five times N. And how much money can we spend? No more than 30. So what inequality am I gonna put there? less than or equal to, right? Now this does graph the system of inequalities on the coordinate plane, okay? So for number of bracelets, let's say we had zero number of bracelets, how many necklaces could we have? So we had zero bracelets. How many necklaces could we have? Just five? If we want to spend like up to 30 bucks, we could do six, right? So we could put a point right here because we had zero bracelets and six necklaces. Okay. What if we had one bracelet? How many necklaces would we have? So we would subtract the three, right? And that would give us 27. And then what's five divided by 27? You got a calculator, 27 divided by five. 5.5. 5. 5. So if we have bracelets, we would have about 5.5. 5. Now we're not gonna have half a bracelet. So this is kind of to be in here, but it's okay. What about if she had two bracelets? How many necklaces could she buy? So three times two is six. 30 minus six is 24. With five, 24 divided by five. It's like four point something. Okay. Two. Okay, what about three bracelets? Three bracelets, that'll be 21 divided by five. That again is gonna be like four point something, right? Okay. So we plugged in four bracelets. Do you see where this is going? Okay. We plugged in four bracelets. That would give us 12. Okay, and that would give us 18 on the other side. So 5n divided by, I'm sorry, less than or equal to 18. If we took 18 and divided by 5, that would give us like 3 point something, right? If we plugged in 5, that would give us 5 comma 3. If we plugged in 6, that would give us like 2 point something. And then if we plugged in 7, 
we would get two point something, I'm sorry, less than two point. About here, we plugged in eight, that would give us eight and one point something. If we plugged in nine, that would give us like a half of one. And then if we plugged in 10, we would have zero bracelets, or I'm sorry, zero necklaces. Now this is gonna be a solid line because we can go up to 30, right? I can't draw a straight line on this thing. Okay. Now, what are two possible combinations of bracelets and necklaces? Well, we said that if we had zero bracelets, how many necklaces would we have? Six, right? If we had 10 bracelets, how many necklaces would we have? We had 10 bracelets, we would have zero necklaces. Now we only wrote one equation or one inequality, right? What was the other piece that they told us up at the top? She can, she needs at least seven items, right? So between the necklaces and the bracelet, she needs at least seven. Can you graph that equation? If you take a moment, I want you to try it. Well, this is what I got for my line. Now, am I going to shade above or below for the red line? Above, because it's at least seven, right? Okay. What about the other one? Am I going to shade above or below? Below. Okay, so here's where the tricky part comes. So you said below. But remember how we talked about yesterday and the day before that the solution is where they both overlap. It can't just be one, it's gotta have both, okay? So the solution right here is our actual answer, okay? So oh, explain how the graphs show that the combination of two bracelets and five necklaces meets one constraint, but doesn't help with the other one. So two and five, that would be like right here, right? But fit this one but doesn't fit the other one well if i plug that in here let's see if it works three times two plus five times five what's five times five and what's three times two what's six plus 25 is that over or under our budget it's over so it doesn't work for that constraint does everybody see that but it is at least seven items, right? So it works for one, but doesn't work for the other. Okay, go ahead and look at the next problem. Go ahead and see if you can write a system, and then we'll they're gonna talk about it in just a second. Do y'all prefer strawberry or blueberry muffins? I'm a big fan of blueberry muffins, they're much better. Strawberry muffins are good too, I guess. It depends on if they're homemade or like store-bought. So you're trying to make muffins and you're trying um, to have blueberries cost $4 per pound and then strawberries cost $3 per pound and you can spend at most $21. Okay, so what system of equations did y'all come up with? So first of all, we gotta kind of define our X and Y or our, our B and S if you want to. Um, Try not to use S as your variable unless you are told to do that because normally it looks like a five. Okay, so blueberries, we're going to be B. Okay, and then for strawberries, we're going to use, um, what did y'all use? This S? Okay, I guess. But S, and that's strawberries, all right? But again, we kind of want to avoid that because you might make the mistake of, oh, that looks like a five. Okay. Now, between the strawberries and the blueberries, we need at least three pounds, right? 
Did you get that for an inequality? Okay, then blueberries cost $4 and strawberries cost three. And you can spend at most $21. Okay, now we're gonna graph it. Okay, so if I have one pound of blueberries, how many pounds of strawberries am I gonna have? I have at least two, right? If I have no blueberries, I have to have at least three strawberries. If I have two blueberries, I'm gonna have at least one. And I have, I have three blueberries, I'm gonna have no strawberries. Okay, so am I gonna shade above or below on this one? Above. We are gonna put a line underneath that one because it says at least three. We can have three or more. Can you take a moment? Can you graph the other inequality? Okay, so this is what I got. To go work. Now my line's a little wonky because I rounded just a little bit. Um, you can also make this a all, super exact on Desmos. So I'm going to show you how to do that on Monday. Um, but I want you to make sure that you can graph it. So what are two possible combinations of blueberries and strawberries you can purchase to make muffins? Well, we can do anything that's inside here. Okay, so two pounds of blueberries and three pounds of strawberries. So you can do two comma three, or you can do um, five comma zero, or you could do zero, oh no, not five comma, I lied, zero comma seven. Okay, anything that's like on the line or a whole number, right? Now determine if you can purchase four pounds of blueberries and one pound of strawberries. Four pounds of blueberries and one pound of strawberries. Does that work for both of our inequalities? Well, let's check. If we have one pound of strawberries plus four pounds of strawberries, it works for this first inequality. Let's see if it works for the second one. Four times four plus three times one. Four times four is 16. Three times one is three. That's 19, is 19 less than 21? Yeah, so then yes, it works. Okay, so again, a system is gonna be two inequalities. So we got roses that cost $1.45. So that's gonna be 1.45 times R, right? And then you got carnations that cost 65 cents. So 0.65 T. How much money can you spend in total? So 200, right? So we got less than 200. A lot of you got this one, but here's what you forgot. You're trying to have enough roses so that each of the 75 people attending can take home at least one rose. Some of y'all did some weird stuff with this. This should be the roses and you need to have at least one rose per 75 people, right? So you're gonna say greater than 75. Does everybody see it? You have to read. This is a very hard language arts lesson, okay? So a lot of you got that first one, but that second part is where we missed up, okay? All right, so I wanna make sure we get a little bit more practice with this because this doesn't go away. Um, I'm gonna give you this. This is like a multiple choice question. 